Hello everyone. So, um, yeah, the local police refuse to help an old man who gets locked out of a running car. A car which happened to be blocking um, a lane of travel in a parking lot. Now, um, yeah, let's talk about it. So, uh, there's a place that I go to uh, to uh, get online. Don't have internet at my house. Um, that's why we have this big um, infrastructure package so that people like me can get high-speed inter internet um, actual lines to our houses so we can pay, you know, less in for uh, internet have actual, you know, equal access to that because internet is a part of the infrastructure. It's a necessary part. So, yeah, anyway, um, so I have to go elsewhere, uh, about 10 miles away, to get online. Yeah, it sucks. Um, so, I was sitting there, and, um, there's an old guy who comes who who comes there every once in a while and um he usually parks next to me and he has this odd ritual whenever he parks his car to shut it down he revs the engine now it's a newer car back in the day sometimes when you would start a car you'd have to rev it to to get keep it going um, but this car is like a 2008 so you know um, but because of that this old guy kind of stuck in my mind so I was sitting there today and um, he got out he parked uh, right next it's a library that I go to he parked right next to the library and um, got out of his car, put a couple of things in the book return, and um, went back to his car, and, uh, well, he was locked out. I didn't know this at first, um, and luckily for him, the cleaning crew had showed up, excuse me, um, I have something in my throat, uh, the cleaning crew had showed up, and they were in the library. Um, it's Sunday, so the library was closed. And um, he got the he talked with them, and they brought out various implements to uh, to try and unlock the car. And uh, eventually, I. I got out of my car and I said, well, um, if you call the police, they can come out and they have um, non-invasive uh, implements with which to unlock a car door because people get locked out, you know, and um, it happens, and especially if their car is running and it's blocking a, even part of a parking lot. You know, it wasn't in a parking space. It was literally, you know, there was the library here, and it was right along the sidewalk. And I had, um, I had been locked out of my car at one point, and um, the owners of the business called the police and had them um, unlock my car for me. So I said, okay, well, I'll, I'll call the police for you and have them come out and do it. I tried calling, and um, my phone quit working. It, it died for some reason. Like, it just shut down. I'm like, what the fuck? And the cleaning crew had already left. Well, thankfully there was someone there, and um, I talked with them and, and um, had them call the police. They called the police. Well, called 911. You don't call the police directly anymore. And uh, they told her that 
the only way that the police would come out, the only reason that the police would would uh, come out and unlock someone's car was if there was a child inside. Okay, I, I understand that. You know, um, a child could potentially die in a in a car if it's running or, you know, if it's hot out and the windows aren't down. And, and But, um, what about someone whose car is just running? It's, you know, it's blocking a lane in a parking lot. Um, now, in terms of the law, things are a little different in parking lots. Um, you know, the police can't take reports if you're in an accident in a parking lot and things like that, but this is a small town. They don't have a lot of residents. They don't have a lot of territory to cover. Um, yet they have plenty of cops. And the cops are always in this area. You're telling me that they couldn't send one of them to come and unlock a door for someone? I mean, part of their, because of how um, poorly constructed the system is, uh, the police are kind of, you know, used as a catch-all for everything, every emergency. Well, um, and, and part of their thing is, to serve and protect, to serve the community. This isn't New York. It's not Seattle. You know, it's they, they don't have a massive population with a massive amount of calls that they get every day. Um, in fact, when whenever they are called, like every single cop, in the area, uh, in the town, shows up. That's how little they have to do. So, um, why couldn't they spend a little manpower to uh, help out an old man who accidentally locked himself out of his running car? Yeah. Well, everybody that was there who heard that bullshit excuse thought it was stupid. And... Um, so the old man uh, asked me if if I'd take him to his house, um, which wasn't too far away. It was, you know, it was a few miles. Take him to his house and bring him back to his car um, with a key, because he had a, an extra key at home. I agreed. Um, he said he would pay me money. I wasn't going to take any money for it, because it wasn't all that far, and it's not a big deal. You know, um, I'm happy to help, since the police are unwilling to help uh, with anything, really. They always make excuses not to help people. Then they're like, oh, but uh, we, we're so helpful to the community, and we're necessary, and, and um, give us all of your money. Fuck you. Um, so I took the old guy there. And, um, he was deaf, so I kept having to yell and say everything multiple times. Um, not his fault, though, and it's, it's fine, I wasn't bothered by it, but part of the experience. And, um, he was also a pro-lifer, so that was fun. Um, luckily, though, he didn't harp on it, you know, when I made it clear that um, that I was just fine with abortion. He, um, did the smart thing and kept his mouth shut. So, um, but, um, yeah, and went there, got back, um, and he gave me a 20, and I said, no, no, it's okay. You know, I tried to give it back to him, and he absolutely refused. He was like, he threw it down, and he just, he got out of the car, and I was like, oh, okay. Um, I didn't do it for money. I did it to help, but um, 
it because I was trying to rush because this car was running um, it did take about three times as much gas as it normally would so the 20 did help um, but um, yeah I just thought that was stupid stupid and arbitrary so I had to bitch about it um, but I, I felt good you know that I I helped someone in need and um, his options were few uh, there was just two of us there and I was the one who was I guess seemed the most um, or the least reluctant to help so um, yeah but I mean if there was nobody there if I wasn't there today the other lady didn't seem too keen on on helping. She did make the phone call, and, which was nice. Um, but uh, he kind of would have been up Shit Creek. So I'm glad I was there. Um, yeah. Anyway. You know, I try to help um, whenever I can. You know, stranded motorists that kind of thing. Um, there are considerations, you know. Um, there's the potential to get carjacked or to get held up and, you know, but this community is small enough and, and I think the crime rate is low enough to where I, I don't have to worry about that too much. Um, and he was an old guy, you know, he wasn't going to do anything to me. Um, I could probably pick this guy up with one hand and spin him around. So, you know. So, my message is try to help people when possible. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody.